FreeNAS 11.3 Beta 1 was released on November 5th, 2019. I updated one of the test systems we have to it, and I really like the updates to the new interface. This is the first kind of refresh uh, was in 11.2 of the interface, and then 11.3, they've, you know, tweaked it, tuned it, improved it. Now, they've been doing that with each one of the updates. Uh, U7 should be out just in a few weeks, I believe. And while that does represent seven updates of the 11.2 series, uh, 11.3, they've really polished it up a bit. And I'm going to get into that in a second here. Now, of course, uh, at your own risk, this is beta one. So obviously, if this is probably not something good for production, and, and this is not something I've really worked with much, and maybe at some point I'll do a video on there. Uh, setting up FreeNAS as a domain controller, they have some very specific instructions if you're doing that to make sure that the beta works. So if you want to um, use or continue to use that, uh, just updating it will bring settings in, but they won't work properly. And they have some instructions down below for like the migration process. And it's basically dropping down into Samba uh, level to do each step of the migration, but they have the instructions here. All right, let's talk about real quick how to load it. Drop to the command line. It's not yet supported for an update, so you can't switch to the uh, beta train yet when you're doing the update, so you do have to do this from the command line. Uh, but let's talk about what is actually built in here. So new peer credentials for API creating managing credentials. The SSH connection and SSH key pair screen have been added as a wizard to make it. So this is it for uh, connecting things via SSH, uh, I believe other free NAS boxes. And that's actually done here. System, SSH connections, add, and you can connect it to, and I haven't really tested this, but another free NAS box. So I thought that was kind of cool. They added that. That's something I've used a lot, but I guess I've used the wizard to do when I did my replication demo. So I guess it's kind of an extension of that so the free NAS can talk to each other. Uh, new transport API as Netcat support. Netcat support for greatly improved speed of transfer. Snapshot creation has been decoupled from replication tasks, allowing replications manually created. This is kind of cool because it was always kind of a one thing it was one piece now they've got it so you have uh, options and added ex more expandability in there configurable snapshot for retention on the remote side so that's cool replication wizard uh it sounds like they added this because there was already kind of a replication wizard but i haven't played with this too much yet uh because i need to set up i'm going to set two of them up both on the new one so i can completely understand how the uh, replication wizard works but it it'll, has a couple different, you know, including local local replication, which if I'm not mistaken, I didn't test this, but a few people had mentioned in the comments on my replication video, uh, you can replicate between pools on the same system by, instead of specifying a remote free NAS, but by specifying a local host. I think that's still true. Sounds like they just added it in there uh, as a feature. So we go over here and let's build a replication task. On this system, destination, on this system, source data set date. Set. I only have one on here. So that's actually kind of cool. So you can actually replicate internally right here uh, through the replication task and then have its own, have another data set be the destination for the replication. That's kind of cool. And if in, the reason you may want to do this, the use case would be uh, so you could go through and have two groups of drives, two separate ones, and then maybe you want to have it copy all of it from these drives over to another set of drives. Because obviously copying it out to the same drives it may have a more limited use case versus um, when you want to do it between sets of drives. If not, you'd probably just do normal snapshots because if it's all in the same drive pool, you can just do it. But uh, depending on your use case, that is now done right through here through the replication tasks. Network interface management has been redesigned to streamline the management on both physical and virtual interfaces using one screen. Now, that is something that I guess was a little confusing in the past. And this is the way FreeNAS, I, well, confusing if you're new to FreeNAS, I should say. Uh, it's something because I've been doing it for a while, I never really had a problem with it, but it was the way they handled the networking tasks in here. So it would be all separated. Now they've made it just one. So if we go over here to network summary, here's the default route, here's the uh, VLAN 69 that's set up on here and this. So we can get this and go to interfaces. Now we can add as one type. So we choose the type. Is it a bridge, link aggregation, or VLAN? It's not in any separate places. And just for reference, if we go over here, we go to network, and this is the um, 11.2U6. This is one of my, this is the actually my video storage server. And uh, we go over here to interfaces, add, you choose the NIC, name the interface, uh, and you can see that it would VLANs is still a separate piece over here. And of course, separate again is 
uh, how you would do link aggregation. So now they've just merged it all into one. So I like that. That's definitely a nice feature. Uh, and this consolidation. Uh, the alert system has been improved. Support for one-shot critical alerts been added. These alerts remain active until dismissed by the user. Alert settings have been recognized. Alert group functionality rather than alphabetically or per alert severity thresholds are configurable. And periodic alert scripts by the alert framework. And this is something I like that they've kind of expanded all this so the system can kind of easily notify you when there's a problem. It did notify you, but it didn't give you certain amounts of granular control over that information. Now they've expanded that a lot, so it's great. Now the dashboard rewrite is something I like. You're going to notice the dashboard being a lot faster uh, and a lot cleaner. I really like the way they laid this out. So when you go here, matter of fact, when you go from different, let's just drop, drop over here. Now if we do that here, and sometimes I just didn't feel as though it was quite as snappy. And I've had times, and even remember in the very first in U1, like right here, how long it took to pull the bandwidth. That was a common thing where it just didn't, it, it kind of paused a lot, and they've done a lot of enhancements, but I guess they did a lot of code rework to uh, lazy load it better and things like that. Also, the way that dynamically loads uh, and has this information on here, I, this is kind of cool. So I know I have this much free, this much dedicated to ZFS cache, and services uh, suck up 1.9 gigs. Also, this little graphics they've added behind each thing for to show like the network interfaces on the panel here. This is nice. And then the reporting menus. Same thing, it's doing the lazy load. So it's going to try to load everything at once. And if I believe I go over here to reporting, there's no lazy load. And what lazy load is, if you're not familiar, is it can um, not load some of the things on the screen so it doesn't suck up all the browser memory. And this is a weird thing I've noticed sometimes if I leave FreeNAS up on the screen for a long time, like in a browser tab, sometimes that browser tab may pause or lock up. I don't know if it's just some memory issues or whatnot, but uh, same problems do not seem to be occurring in the new one. So I think they've just streamlined it and made it a lot more efficient. And they got a lot of detail. I'll leave a link to all this so you can read through all the detail in here. Uh, the ACL manager is probably going to need its own video. And I bring that up because when you're setting up the services and you do window sharing, actually you go over to your storage and pool. And I created just a basic window share and a data set here. And I go to edit permissions. Data, sets, data set has complex ACLs. So instead of going to normal permissions, like if it was a Unix or NFS share, it says, oh, wait, you've set this up as Samba. Let's go advanced. And it gives you, um, you know, group options, group allow, basic permission types, full permissions, uh, flag type, basic, advanced. And it lets you dig in a lot more to some of the permissions. And it's got some other wizards in here. So you can go through here and add ACL item. Actually, you can add, 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 add. And granularly change and delegate some of these permission types. So who has permission to what? So you can create group, owner, everyone. And uh, this is, I'm not dug into all the features and what all it can do, but there is a lot in here it can do. So it also has the option to strip them out if you goof it all up. So I'm going to hit cancel so I don't have to mess with that. But I like this, the fact that this gives you way more advanced features uh, for natively handling all the access control lists inside of here. So that's that's a pretty big improvement they're going there. The iSCSI wizard. Let's play with that real quick. So we go to your services and we go over to iSCSI. We have a wizard button. And uh, I already have a Z vol created. It does require that you at least have done that already. So we're going to device and we'll go SCSI wizard. I just created a device called SCSI wizard. And then what is it going to connect to? A VMware, a Zen server legacy OS or modern, modern OS. So it kind of has some different options on there. So legacy OS, extent block 512, modern OS, extent block 4K, um, extent block 512 with Zen compact mode. So now we can just go next. What is the portal? Create a new one. I have an existing portal already created, so it'll work for that. I'm not going to use any of that. And submit. Whoops. Got to use lowercase. This is one bug I did notice. I actually repeated this kind of on purpose, um, maybe mental accident again. It does require that you uh, have it lowercase, but it should give you that error at the beginning, I think, not wait till you get through it all. But it remembers the things you selected, submit, and voila, we have now created another uh, SCSI target in there called the SCSI wizard. So now we have that. So pretty straightforward on actually what it should not allow me another bug I found this should one of these should be one let's go back 
I change it back to zero or it will give me an error. Oh, they have different targets. I had done this before. That's why it's allowing me in different initiators. Okay, so it allowed me to have the same LUN because there's going to be a different choice in there. But you get the idea that they've now have as a wizard to make it easier. As you can tell, I played with this a couple times, and uh, it's definitely handy when you're starting out. And I have a whole more in-depth video on how to set up some of the SCSI types on there. So that's really cool. Uh, significant improvements to SMB sharing include ZFS user quota support, web service discovery support, and improved directory listing performance of newly created shares. So that's really cool that they've done that. And the middleware WebSockets API v2 rewrite is complete. API v1's backwards compatibility will be deprecated and no longer available in the next range release. Things they got rid of. Uh, the legacy web interface. Sorry, if you're going to 11.3 train, you're on the new interface. There's no more legacy support. That has been removed. Uh, Warden has been removed, which is the older jails manager. So your older jails are broken. And I thought this was interesting, but I have seen this as a problem. If you leave net data running all the time, it has a memory leak apparently that will cause it to eventually exhaust memory. I don't know if this is something because I'm not seeing this on my Linux servers running this, but apparently it is definitely something I've seen on my 11.2 free NAS where it seems to just start sucking up a lot of memory. So they... Uh, fix whatever problem by removing it. Uh, well, I can't say they fixed it. They, they just removed it to instead of fixing the problem because, well, that data didn't fix the problem. And I'm going to do a video at some point in the true command, which provides similar reporting plus advanced management capabilities for single or multiple services. If you're not familiar with the true command product, um, it is a free for the first 50 servers, which I think is kind of a cool feature, uh, and they charge after that. So it still is free for the home users, uh, essentially, unless you have more than 50 servers at your house, then, well, that's a very special use case you have. But True, True Command expands the ease of use and power of TrueNAS and FreeNAS. So it's kind of giving you a NAS fleet dashboard, single sign-on, uh, customized alerts, and it's something I want to dig into at some point. I'm going to do a separate video on this because I have some clients that were asking me about it because they do manage at a data center level a bunch of True NAS boxes and they have some free NAS boxes as backup. So um, I've been on my to-do list. I know so few people have asked me about it. It's something I'm going to look into. The built-in Docker template has been removed through, uh, through Docker. It can still be deployed through the Linux virtual machine. Now, I have not dove into Docker or the VMs that much because I've played a little bit with them on free NAS. I've not really figured it out. And I see that um, because I've just had a lot of little quirky issues with it. I don't think that the Beehive system feels as developed as other hypervisors I've used. So not really a, uh, maybe a later point when I learn it better or if I take the time to learn it better, I'll dig into it. But I also just don't really have a use case for it. But I know some people do is they want to run one run system, but it really, it doesn't have all those advanced migration features that you get in a lot of the other modern hypervisors. So it's pretty basic for running maybe small virtual machines because you want to have one system that runs it. An ideal way to uh, or an ideal system maybe would be if you wanted to run some type of MDR software in there for recording, having it inside of that type of, instead of a jail, but actually running as its own VM. And then, of course, living on a great storage pool with ZFS would be a good use case for it. Um, but I just had some issues with it. Known impacts. Uh, the system no longer allows the system data set to to an encrypted pool containing a passphrase sensor directory services and some SMB state information stored in the system data set. These services not function the system data set is locked or otherwise unavailable. It is recommended you, you move the data set to a non-encrypted pool or an encrypted pool not containing a pass phase. I thought this was a little confusing to me, so I'll have to dig into that further. Um, but it sounds like a lot of moving the system data set to an encrypted pool containing. So you can't move it, but I can have an encrypted one. I'm a little fuzzy on that, so I guess I'll need some clarification later. Uh, Time Machine over SMB shares has been configured to use auxiliary parameter backups um, and may fail since middleware now performs SMB, um, et cetera, on there. I've not really used Time Machine much, so I can't really speak a lot to that. The default NFS, NFS4 mode changed from special to simple. This change uh, recommended synchronized with Samba and defaults to provide better user experience and the legacy behavior is required. And the following auxiliary parameter to all SMB shares Special. It's important that all shares have the same mode settings that are in a common caching backend to the SID ID lookups. So hopefully this doesn't break anything. This is something I have to test is how that works. I'll do some testing later, but I'm not, it, it is still beta. So well, we're going to have to do that. 
Uh, legacy AD monitoring has been replaced by the following health checks. So hourly clock skew, check DC with PDC emulator for FISMO roles. Uh, test connection to net log on to share connected DC every 10 minutes and instantaneous start of windbind status of so domain transition offline. Once again, I'm going to have to see how this works. I don't know if I'll really be testing this in the beta. We have clients that do have Active Directory uh, tied in with their FreeNAS, and it, it actually works really well. Uh, ever since the 11.2, they've really come a long way from the, uh, I'm thinking way back to the 9 series when this was just a big headache to make work. So you can do it pretty well. So there, it looks like they're fine-tuning it a bit more. And the team has really done a great job. I remember speaking a long time ago with Chris Moore. They said they you know, got some really good, talented people that were uh, good at that integration level of Active Directory. And that's what's really brought the project on. They've been there a little while now, so we're seeing the results of all that, of a lot of fine-tuning. Because whether you like the Microsoft world or not, Active Directory is the glue that holds our uh, – access control list together essentially for delegating out permissions in the you know world of file sharing. So uh, the reality is as much as I want to be a Linux fanboy all the time, I work in the business world and I have to deal with uh, Windows permissions and everything else. And Freenance is actually able to handle that as a file server um, at scale with all the power of ZFS, but still having those nice delegated file permissions that you can do with Active Directory. Now, that's the end of the list here. So I'll be doing some more testing with this. I may wait till beta two when it shows up in there because if you go over here to system, like I said, you have to do this from the command line. So if I go to updates, it is not in the list yet. They have the 11 nightlies, but that's not the same as the 11.3 series. So I don't think until it's beta two, which may be when they're going to have this updated on there. So I may wait till beta 2 before I switch my main system over to it, but I do want to do some testing with it, and I do welcome this new UI. I will miss net data, which means I will be forced if I want to look at fancy graphs to load true command. So now I have more um, of a push to get into and dive into true command and take a look at it. Um, but this was running on a free NAS Mini XL Plus provided by IX Systems, the box I've been doing my testing with for some of the VM stuff and a few different, well, that last handful of free NAS videos that I've done. And uh, it's been just rocking and rolling really well here. Right now it's got a handful, we got about 20 terabytes of space for, I call it the red tank, it's a bunch of Western Digital Red Drives. And it didn't have any problems switching back and forth. I did manage to screw up the install. Don't run the install a second time. Um, trying to do, I, well, I, I messed it up. I ran it a second time. The good news is if you're familiar with FreeNAS, I have a video about recovering it. All you have to do is go over here to the system and you can go over to the boot environment and switch back to the one that you didn't screw up. So here is the beta that is now on reboot. Uh, I deleted the extra one. I somehow installed it twice because I thought, hey, it didn't run. I, and it's because I didn't reboot it. And I ran the command twice for the update uh, like the show there. But if you have a system that you feel that you want to do some uh, digging around in and talk about some of the availability and update, they have it here. I will also leave you this. Here's an entire read you can do, uh, sort of started by Chris Moore. And uh, he's talks about some of the overhauled dashboard, et cetera, et cetera, some of the things in here, and then the discussion. Now, there are some finite discussions in here, and some people love it, some people hate it. That's, of course, the fun of forums. And they talk about uh, the different versions that they're going to be running, because the question that came up to me is which version and why they do what they do when it comes to which version of FreeBSD they're going to be on. That's all actually discussed, and Chris gives all the reasons for um the whys of how, why they do this and how they backport things. So if you want a more in-depth read, and this is actually still being updated even as of today, which is November 9th, there were still put, uh, posts going back and forth in here. And, you know, like I said, it's a uh, good banter back and forth and discussions. But if you want to try this out and you do find problems, please file a bug report. Um, and like I said, I may switch my main, well, not my main system to it, but the system that manages all my videos, uh, which is right here. I may switch this over and see how it works on the uh the new 11.3 uh, train and go from there. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. 
Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.